Hi everyone and welcome to The Forge. In this new video, we are leaving the Middle Ages of Warhammer Fantasy Battle to go to the far future of Warhammer 40k. And as some of you may know, in the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. Today, we are going to try to rebuild one of the most deadliest weapons of the Imperium of Man, 50% man, 50% machine, 100% badass, the Dreadnought. Let's go for it. To realize this first step, I used a kitchen knife, a cutter, XPS foam, toothpicks, and glue. Here the idea is to try to recreate the three main parts that constitute the heart of a dreadnought. To complete the heart, I added a small triangular piece that will serve as a support for the legs. I then glued everything together and reinforced it with toothpicks. I then began to cut the legs of the dreadnought. In order to eventually have two legs apart, I added two layers of XPS foam on both sides of the support piece. Let's now get to the arms that for the Dreadnought are replaced by powerful weapons. And we start with the left arm that for our Dreadnought will be equipped with a rocket launcher. The rockets are represented by toothpicks cut in half and planted into the arm. The left arm is now completed and can now be glued to the rest of the dreadnought. We can now turn to the right arm that will be equipped with a double assault cannon. To represent the many mouths of the assault cannon, I used big toothpicks that I glued together 4x4. Four four. I took advantage of the drying time to glue the legs. I added to these legs two very simple feats in which I dug holes in the idea of being able to later insert the legs. The double assault cannon is now dry and finished, so I was able to glue the right arm to the dreadnought, thus ending our base. And we can now go to the details. You need to take your time working on the details because even if your base roughly resembles a dreadnought, the details are what will make your dreadnought go from creepy looking to okay, maybe even from okay to good. And the first details we are going to work on are what we are going to call the Dreadnought's stabilizing toes. It will here be represented 
by height triangle of 2 mm high. To reinforce the protection of the drain knot, I am going to add armor plates around the core. These armor plates are represented by wooden coffee steerers cut lengthwise Using the same technique, I also added armor plates on the two arms of my dreadnought. I finally added some armor plates around each flank of the dreadnought. In short, as you can see, I spent all day cutting and gluing wooden coffee stirrer. Shit happens. For the base, I decided to represent a ground of volcanic rocks traversed by lava flows. To strengthen the base and make it a bit more heavier, I added some plaster of Paris. I then traced the lava flows into the plaster of Paris using whatever tools I could find. I am now going to focus on the back of the dreadnought by adding two exhaust pipes. And last detail, I added electric cables by using the binding of an old calendar which consisted in a kind of wire. That's it, we have now added a lot of details, we can now begin to paint To begin with the painting, I base coated the entire dreadnought in black. The main color of our dreadnought will be blue, the blue of the good old Robert Gulliman Ultramarines. I then painted the armor plates with silver with a very dry brush to avoid any silver going into the gaps between the armor plates. I painted 
the armor plates around the flanks with gold. I painted the rocket launcher in silver with the rockets in red. We will then highlight the contours with a very light silver dry brush. So we started the blue with a base of Kalidor Sky and now it's time to put a second layer of Alator Blue to get this richer and best looking color. While the second layer of blue is drying, we start our work on the base with the first layer of orange on the lava flows. Followed by a thinner and more transparent layer of red. Now is a small French moment of this video as I added a French flag to the dreadnought. I finished the last bit of details by painting some of the cables in orange. I painted the visor in red. The stabilizing toes in silver. To lighten the base, I dry brushed it with a bit of white. And finally, pairs of Fs like Forge of Fino. That's it, our dreadnought is now completed. Thanks to all those who stayed so far. Don't hesitate to like, subscribe or comment. See you in the next video. Bye.